conic sections in this module you have learned about the conic sections when a straight line intersects the vertical line at a fixed point and rotates about that a fixed point the surface so obtained is called a double right circular cone a double right circular cone consists of two cones joined at a fixed point is called the vertex the line that rotates about the vertex is called the generator and the line that remains fixed is called the axis the right circular cone has a circular base and its axis is always perpendicular line from the center of the base to the vertex the perimeter of the base is called the directrix the lateral surface of a right circular cone is called a nap the double right circular cone has two naps the nap about the vertex is called the upper nap and that below the vertex is called the lower nap and so the angle between the generator and the axis is called the vertex angle conic sections if a plane intersects a double right circular cone we get two dimensional curves of different types these curves are called conic sections depending on the angle made by the plane with the vertical axis of a cone the plane can cut the cone in three different ways ellipse when the plane intersects the double right circular cone in such a way that the angle between the plane and the axis is greater than the vertex angle we get a closed curve called an ellipse when the plane is perpendicular to the axis the ellipse becomes a circle thus a circle is a special type of ellipse parabola when the angle made by the plane with the vertical axis is exactly equal to the vertex angle we get an open curve called a parabola at the intersecting surface of the cone hyperbola the plane intersects only one nap of the double right circular cone as long as the angle between the plane and the vertical axis is greater than or equal to the vertex angle however if the plane intersects the vertical axis at an angle smaller than the vertex angle the plane intersects both the naps of a cone to form an open curve called a hyperbola which has two disjoint curves degenerate conics if the plane intersects the double right circular cone at its vertex the ellipse becomes a point the parabola becomes the line and the hyperbola becomes two intersecting lines the figures so obtained are called degenerate conics module you have learned that when a plane intersects a double right circular cone two dimensional curves called conic sections are formed There are three types of conic sections ellipse parabola and hyperbola when the double right circular cone is cut by the plane so that the angle between the plane and the axis is greater than the vertex angle the ellipse obtained when the plane is perpendicular to the axis the ellipse changes into a circle if a double right circular cone is cut by a plane so that 
the angle between the plane and the axis is equal to the vertex angle the parabola is formed if a double right circular cone is cut by a two plane so that the angle between the plane and the axis is less than the vertex angle the hyperbola is formed if a plane intersects the double right circular cone at its vertex the figures formed are called degenerated conics good morning students hope you have understood the concept of conic section with the video so let us start the chapter conic sections today conic sections so the conic sections or conics can be defined as the locus of a point which moves in a plane such that the ratio of its distance from a fixed point to its perpendicular distance from a fixed line is always constant is called a con or a conic section so let uh, s be the fixed point and l equals to 0 be a fixed straight line fixed straight line and p b any point in a plane and m b the projection of p projection of p on l then the locus of p such that sp by pm is is a constant is a constant is called a conic is called a conic so this is uh this is the fixed point s and this is a moving point in a plane and this l equals to 0 is a fixed straight line so this is the uh, distance of p from the fixed point and let m be the let m be the projection or normal or simply perpendicular of p on this l equals to 0 this is this is pm so sp by pm the ratio of sp by pm is always a constant is called a conic here the fixed point here the fixed point s is called focus fixed line fixed line l is called the directrix the directrix and uh, the constant the constant fixed constant denoted by denoted by e is called this is called eccentricity eccentricity so the ratio is called the conic so sp by pm is equals to a constant that constant is called the com uh, that uh, ratio is called the eccentricity so if this e is equals to 1 then the conic is called a parabola that means so this is the fixed point and this is the fixed line so let us suppose this to be p it's this uh, so m is the perpendicular of p 
on to L equals to 0 fixed line, this is M, then this is equals to this. When E is equals to 1, then SP by PM equals to 1, SP is equals to PM, that means the its distance from a fixed point is equals to its distance from a fixed line, that is to say, and if E value is lying in between 0 and 1, then the conic is called an ellipse. The conic is called an ellipse. An ellipse. If E is greater than 1, then the conic is called a hyperbola. If E is equals to 0, then the conic is called a circle. Similarly, if E is tending to infinity, then the conic is called a pair of straight lines. A pair of straight lines. So, let S B uh, H comma K and L A X plus B Y plus C equals to zero comma let P X comma Y be any point any point in the plane and M is the perpendicular M is the perpendicular of P on L equals to 0 then by the definition then by the definition of a conic SP by PM is equals to E. That means, that means, so let S be the fixed point here and L equals to 0 is the fixed line and P is a point here. This is H comma K and this is X comma Y and this is M. So what is this L? AX plus by plus c equals to 0 this is sp now according to the definition its distance from a fixed point the ratio of its distance from a fixed point to its distance from a fixed line that means sp by pm is equals to e so what is sp two points are there, distance formula. So, otherwise, SP is equals to cross multiplication EPM. Squaring on both sides, SP square equals to E square PM square. What is SP? The distance of uh, two points. The distance between the two points. So, square root of. So, that is why I have squared here. Then, I got X minus H whole square plus Y minus K whole square is equals to E square. What is PM? PM is the perpendicular distance of this P onto the line AX plus BY plus C equals to 0. Length of the perpendicular drawn from P X comma Y to this line is AX plus BY plus C by square root of A square plus B square. So PM square means this whole square and this square and root will be eliminated. Then, let us see what will happen. If you expand here, x square plus y square minus 2hx minus 2ky plus h square plus k square. Okay? That means, x square, y square, uh, 2hx means x, 2ky means y plus h square plus square square. That means constant here, 
if you square here a plus b plus c whole square a square plus b square plus c square that means here x square y square next uh, constant square next 2a x b y that means x y quotient y c c y constant y uh, plus constant x that means on simplification so we are getting x square y square x y so on simplifying the above equation we will get a second degree non homogeneous equation so let us consider that uh, second degree non homogeneous equation to be ax square plus 2hxy plus by square plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equals to 0 so this is the that means the equation of a conic we will get in terms of x and y which is a second degree non homogeneous equation so just now we have discussed that the sp by pm is equals to e after the expansion of it and simplifying we will arrive to a general equation we will arrive to a second degree non homogeneous equation ax square plus 2hx square plus by square plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equals to 0 last year we know we have learned about this delta delta is equals to abc plus 2fgh minus af square minus bg square minus ch square if this delta actually we can classify this into two categories delta is equals to zero delta not equals to zero delta equals to zero in pair of straight lines we have learned this and if delta not equals to zero we will going to we are going to learn about these things okay so earlier if uh, on the basis of e if e is greater than 1 less than 1 is equals to 0 e, le, e is tending to infinity etc so on the basis of that actually the behavior of a conic we have discussed and now based on the second degree non homogeneous equation if uh, this delta is equals to 0 then this s is called degenerate coin that we have discussed this in the video and if delta not equals to 0 so this in these two categories we can classify if h square equals to ab s represents a pair of parallel lines h square is greater than ab this we have discussed and actually based on these problems also we have solved in the first year pair of intersecting lines h square is less than ab pair of imaginary lines intersecting at a real point if delta not equals to 0 in this if h is equals to 0 a is equals to b simply h is equals to 0 if you substitute then quotient of x y is missing and quotient of x square is equals to quotient of y square both are b is also a for example and a if you take common then x square plus y square plus 2gx plus 2f plus c equals to 0 that is the general equation of a circle otherwise ax square plus ay square plus 2gx plus 2f plus c equals to 0 also that is the circle equation if a is equals to b is equals to 1 then that is the general equation of a circle that we have learned with this and if h square equals to ab then this second degree home, non homogeneous equation will convert into a parabola and if h square is less than ab then s represents an ellipse h square is greater than ab then s represents a hyperbola and h square greater than ab and a plus b not uh, is equals to 0 then s represents a rectangular hyperbola before we begin into the actual session we shall be discussing the various terminologies of this conic sections first principal axis principal axis the straight line which is passing through the straight line which is passing through 
the fixed point what is meant what is fixed point focus and perpendicular to perpendicular to the fixed line what is fixed line directrix is called a principal axis is called principal axis that means so this is s and this is l equals to 0 passing through passing through a straight line passing through the fixed point and perpendicular to the fixed line passing through the uh, fixed point passing through the focus and the perpendicular to the fixed line which is a directrix so therefore this line is called this line is called the principal axis next chord the line joining any two points any two points of a con of a conic is called is called a chord so for example because uh, the circle chapter is already over let us uh, see this so this is a circle this is a conic for example so a line passing through a line passing through any two points of a conic here this conic for example is a circle so the line joining any two points of a conic is called a chord focal chord the chord passing through a chord passing through the focus is called focal chord that is this is the focus and a line passing through the focus is called a focal chord double ordinate the chord which is the chord which is perpendicular to the directrix is called double ordinate that means if you take the situation here so this is fixed line and equals to zero this is fixed point focus so this is the straight line this is the straight line this is the straight line passing through the focus and perpendicular to the directrix and now this line this line which is perpendicular to the principal axis is called the double ordinate and latus rectum latus rectum the double ordinate the double ordinate passing through the passing through the focus is called double ordinate passing through the focus is called latus rectum latus rectum that means this is the fixed point and this is a fixed line so this is a straight line which is called the principal axis because the, this is the straight line passing through the focus and perpendicular to the fixed line so this is the principal axis and a line this line not only passing through the focus but also it is perpendicular to the principal axis 
so whenever it is a perpendicular it is a double ordinate whenever it is perpendicular this line is perpendicular to the principal axis it is double ordinate now this double ordinate is passing through the focus this line is called the lattice rectum in another way foc or focal cord focal cord means passing through the focus focal cord which is perpendicular to the axis is called lattice rectum lattice rectum so this is so if it is so what is cord the cord uh, the line joining of the two points of the cord uh, of the conic is called the cord that cord is passing through the focus focal cord this focal cord is perpendicular to the principal axis so focal cord perpendicular to the principal axis is equals to the double ordinate passing through the focus both are same which is a lattice rectum and center center the point which bisects the point which bisects every chord of a conic the point which bisects every chord of a conic passing through it is called is called center so for example for example so this is a conic for example and this is the center then uh, for example this chord if i take uh, this point c bisects the chord equally not only that if you take this for example this point c bisects this chord into equal parts so that point is said to be what it's a center now let us begin our actual chapter parabola so parabola the locus of a point which moves in a plane such that its distance from a focus focus means fixed point from a focus is always equal to its distance from a fixed point is called parabola so what is what it says let the s be the focus let us be the focus l be the directrix l be the directrix let p be a knee point in the plane such that any uh, point in the plane and m be the projection of m be the projection of so here p be any point in the plane m be the projection of p on l equals to 0 <coughs> m is this let m be the projection of p on L equals to zero. 
<coughs> then the locus of P such that S P by P M is equals to E, where E is equals to one. Then S P is equals to P M. That means let P be any point in the plane. Its distance from a fixed point, that is focus, to its distance from a fixed line, these two must be equal. Likewise, if you take another point, its distance, for example, this is P two now. Its distance from a fixed point. Next, its distance from a fixed line are equal. Another point, if you take. its distance from a fixed point to its distance from a fixed line likewise if you take this point for example its distance this is p3 now p4 its distance from a fixed point by its distance from a fixed line so <coughs> um this is equals to this and the locus of all such points if you join then the shape obtained is called a parabola so sp by pm equals to equals to 1 then sp is equals to pm let z be the projection let z be the projection of z be the projection of s on n equals to 0 That is this z. Z be the projection of s on l equals to zero. Then, then s z is called the principal axis. S z is called the principal axis. So we will now derive the equation of a parabola in its standard or simplest form a parabola is said to be in its standard or simplest form if and only if its vertex is at the origin and it is either symmetric about x axis or y axis now we shall derive the equation of a parabola in its standard form equation of a parabola in its standard form that is y square equals to 4ax so so let s be the focus and l Equals to zero be the directrix and P B any point in the plane. Next, let M comma Z be the projection. or feet of the perpendiculars of p comma s on the directrix l equals to 0 respectively let n be the projection of p on sz on sz what is sz principal axis of p on sz principal axis let let 
ए एस बी ट्रीटेड एस लेट ए एस बी ट्रीटेड एस पॉजिटिव एक्स एक्सिस एंड ए वाई बी ए वाई बी ट्रीटेड एस पॉजिटिव वाई एक्सिस ए वाई बी ट्रिकेड एस पॉजिटिव वाई एक्सिस लेट लेट ए बी द मिड पॉइंट ऑफ लेट ए बी द मिड पॉइंट ऑफ एस जेड सच दैट एस सी आई इज इक्वल टू ए जेड इज इक्वल टू S is equals to A Z. Then, by the definition of a conic, by the definition of a conic, <coughs> A lies on the parabola. A lies on the parabola. Let C I is equals to A Z is equals to A. So let us try to draw the diagram of what we have written so far. See this. This is the quadrant axis. Let this be the parabola located on the right hand side of the y axis. It may be left hand side of the y axis as well. Otherwise, it would be upward parabola. Download all these parabolas are said to be the parabolas in their standard form. So, but for convenience, let us take any one of them. So, this is this. Let S be the focus. What is focus? It's a fixed point, and L is equals to zero be the directrix. S be the focus. L equals to zero be the directrix. And P be any point in the plane. So in this plane, I'll take P be any point. For example, this. This P be any point in the plane. M comma Z be the projection or feet of the perpendicular. So M, M comma Z, M comma Z be the projections of of what? M is the projection of P. And Z be the projection of S on the directrix L equals to zero. Therefore, this is L equals to zero directrix. This is this M is the projection of P on L equals to zero. Similarly, this Z is the projection of S on L equals to zero. Or we can say the feet of the perpendiculars also. Next, let n be the projection of P on S Z. So I'll take uh, this point uh, n. This n is a projection of P. So this point n, this point n be the projection of P on the S Z is what? It's a principal axis. Okay. Principal axis. Let A S be treated as positive x axis. So this is A. So A is called vertex. So what is vertex? The point of intersection of a conic and the principal axis. What is principal axis? Principal axis is that straight line which is passing through the fixed point. I am talking about this. so as is called the principal axis why because this is a straight line passing through the fixed point focus and this straight line is perpendicular to the fixed line directrix okay as be treated as positive x axis and what is a a is called the vertex why because the vertex is defined to be the point of intersection of a conic what is the conic here parabola the point of intersection of this parabola and uh, this x axis which is principal axis or intersecting at this point a so this 
be treated as positive x axis and a y this is y y axis this is x axis this is y axis negative x axis y y dash a s be treated as positive x axis and a y be treated as the negative y axis a y be treated as positive y axis let a be the midpoint of s z that means this and this are equal a be the midpoint of s z such that if it is the midpoint a z is equal to a s then by the definition of a conic what is the de conic definition its distance from a fixed point is equal to its distance from a fixed line so that is why if it is so then a lies in the parabola let s a is equal to a z is equal to a so this is the origin 0 0 this is a comma 0 and this is minus a comma 0 let a s is equal to a then s is a comma 0 z is a minus a comma 0 and the equation of the directrix L is so equation of the directrix is this and this is the line which is parallel to y axis any line which is parallel to y axis is of the form x equals to k so L is x equals to k k in the sense this is a and this is also a so x is equals to minus a this is x equals to this is a this is a but speaking from the uh, coordinates perspective this is x equals to minus a is this line so x equals to a that is x plus a is equals to 0 let p x1 y1 let p x1 y1 be the locus of the parabola since p lies on since p lies on the parabola so its distance from a focus sp by definition of a conic by definition of a conic its distance from a fixed point by its distance from a fixed line is equals to e eccentricity e that e is equals to 1 in the case of parabola that is sp is equals to pm what is sp sp is the distance between these two points a comma 0 and x1 y1 that is square root of x1 minus a whole square plus y1 minus 0 whole square and what is pm pm is nothing but pm is nothing but perpendicular distance from px1 y1 to the line what is this line x plus a is equals to 0 pm is the perpendicular distance from px1 comma y1 to the line x plus a equals to 0 that is equals to perpendicular distance x1 plus a by square root of 1 square square root of ax plus by plus c equals to 0 and x1 y1 ax1 plus by1 plus c by square root of quotient of x square x square of the quotient of x plus square of the quotient of y that is root 1 this is simply x1 plus a and the pm is equals to how much pm is equals to pm is equals to this uh, nz why because this is a perpendicular and this is also 90 degrees that means and this is also 90 degrees n is the projection 
n is the projection and z is the projection n is the projection of p n is the projection of p on l equals to 0 z is the projection of z is the projection of s on l equals to 0 and n is the projection of p on s z principal axis therefore this is 90 this is 90 this is 90 so this also should be 90 degrees therefore therefore so uh, p m z n is a rectangle then p m is equal to according to the property of rectangle opposite sides are equal so p m is equal to n z and what is this n z n z is nothing but n a plus a z n a plus a z what is n a n a so since this is the origin n a is nothing but x1 and p n is nothing but y1 since it is acting at, as a origin so n is at a distance of x1 units from the y axis and p n is the y1 this y component so n a plus a z n a is n a is x1 plus a z what is a z this is a and this is also s a is equals to a z is equals to s a is equals to a z is equals to a we have taken earlier this is also a and this is also a that means x1 plus a now now from this sp is equals to pm if you square on both sides sp square equals to pm square then what is sp square here what is sp square sp square is this sp is this sp square is square and root will be will gets eliminated therefore we are left with x1 minus a whole square plus y1 square is equals to pm is equals to in both the ways i have uh, uh, proved pm is x1 plus a the same pm is if you uh, proceed through the rectangle also x1 plus a so here only one is enough but for your convenience actually if uh, uh, you could not understand this so you can understand with this okay so pm is nothing but x1 plus a square now x1 square plus a square minus 2a x1 plus y1 square is equal to x1 square plus a square plus 2a x1 x1 square a square x1 square a square gets cancelled therefore y1 square is equal to this minus 2a x1 if you transpose on that side 2a x1 plus 2a x1 4a x1 therefore the locus of p x1 y1 is if you remove this x1 y1 then actually the general equation actually the behavior of this point in the plane we get so behavior of such points if you generalize then actually the whole equation of the parabola we will be getting therefore the locus of px1 y1 is y square equals to 4ax which is the standard form of the parabola whose vertex is at the origin and which is uh, symmetric about the positive x axis which we will be learning afterwards let us discuss the some definitions of a parabola some definitions first of all coordinate the line joining so in conic sections also we have discussed all of them but once again let us see this the line joining any two points of a parabola is called a chord 
that means this is the parabola so these two are the points of the, the uh, this is the line joining of the two points of a parabola so this line is called the chord focal chord the chord passing through the chord passing through the focus focus means parabola is called focal chord so let this be the parabola and this be the focus so this time earlier focus is somewhere here this chord is not passing through the focus earlier that is a chord now the chord passing through the focus so this is the focal chord like these chords many chords infinite number of chords can be drawn so this likewise here also passing through the focus there may be number of infinite uh, focal chords can be possible so if you draw like this draw like this and all and double ordinate double ordinate the chord which is perpendicular to the the chord which is perpendicular to the principal axis is called is called double ordinate so before that what is vertex the point of intersection of a conic and and axis so principal axis can be shortly termed as axis also is called vertex that means this is the parabola this is the parabola and this is the axis so both are intersecting at this point this point is called the vertex a now what is the principal axis the principal axis is a straight line passing through the focus and perpendicular to the fixed line so okay principal axis is what so actually we should have written it earlier but no problem the principal axis the straight line which is passing through passing through the fixed point focus and perpendicular to the fixed line directrix is called is called principal axis or axis or principal axis that means if you have a parabola like this now this is the this is the fixed point and this is the fixed line l equals to 0 the point of uh, so the straight line which is passing through the focus and perpendicular to the directrix this straight line is called the this straight line is called the principal axis now what is double ordinate the chord which is perpendicular to the principal axis so for example this is my parabola and this is focus s and this is my principal axis okay this is my principal axis the chord the chord 
which is perpendicular to the principal axis. Here it is not passing through the focus like the focal cord. And the focal cord is not perpendicular to the axis. This cord, this focal cord is not perpendicular to the principal axis, not straight. But here it is straight, it is double ordinate. Now, latus rectum, latus rectum, the focal cord, focal cord means passing through the focus. The focal cord which is perpendicular to the axis or the double ordinate the double ordinate double ordinate means which is perpendicular the double ordinate passing through the focus passing through the focus is called latus rectum that means if you take the diagram like this this is our focus <coughs> this is our focus and this line this line is called the cord because why cord this is the line joining of two any two points of this parabola this is the cord this cord is passing through the focus therefore it is focal cord and this focal cord is perpendicular to the principal axis otherwise this is a double ordinate because this cord is perpendicular to the principal axis and passing through the focus so from focal cord as well as double ordinate perspective we can define the lattice rectum focal distance the distance of a point p on the parabola let us take this is the point p on the parabola the distance of a point p on the parabola from its focus <coughs> let p be x1 y1 and s be a comma 0 the distance of a p on the parabola from its fixed point focus is called the <coughs> focal distance sp so here sp is equal to how much distance between the two points square root of <coughs> x1 minus a whole square plus y1 minus 0 whole square this is equal to x1 square plus a square minus 2a x1 plus y1 square so this is equals to x1 square plus a square minus 2a x1 since since p x1 y1 lies on the parabola lies on the parabola so this must satisfy the equation of the parabola so parabola y square equals to 4ax it must satisfy that means y1 square equals to 4a x1 so this y1 square can be replaced as 4a x1 now now this is x1 square plus a square plus 4a x1 minus 2a x1 is plus 2a x1 so this can be x1 plus a whole square this this is x1 plus a modulus Therefore, this is this x1 plus a. The length of the, the focal distance of p from the fixed point is called the focal distance. The length of the lattice rectum of the parabola y square equals to 4x is 4a. So, this is our parabola and this is focus. This is directrix L equals to 0 fixed line fixed point focus and this L L dash L comma L dash is what it is a cord this cord is passing through the focus focal cord 
and this focal chord is perpendicular to the principal axis double ordinate okay na so this focal chord this focal chord is perpendicular to the axis therefore it is a latus rectum so let l comma l dash be the ends of the latus rectum so this is a and this is z z is the projection of s on l equals to 0 so za equals to as a is the midpoint of zs this is a comma 0 that means this is minus a comma 0 a is the midpoint therefore this is a as well as this is also a so if it is a comma 0 then this would be a comma this could be a comma this height i don't know for which uh, let us take l l so here this is minus l therefore l l dash is equals to how much 2 l this is l and this is l so l l dash is equals to 2 l what is l l dash the length of the lattice rectum okay now so since l comma l dash or the points on the parabola so that implies a comma plus or minus l must satisfy must satisfy the equation of the parabola y square equals to 4 a x a comma l and a comma minus l these two points are lying on the parabola therefore the points must satisfy the equation of the line equation of the parabola so that implies y square here is l square equals to 4 a what is x here a so this is 4 a square l square equals to therefore l is equals to plus r minus 2 a therefore l is equals to here l is equals to a comma plus 2 a and l dash is equals to a comma minus 2 a or the end points or in other words extremities extremities of the lattice rectum and the length of the lattice rectum is length of the lattice rectum is equal to l l dash l l dash is sl plus sl dash sl plus sl dash that is l plus l 2 l so 2 into what is l 2 a so 4 a so length of the lattice rectum this is totally 4 a